Running It Back is presented to you by the Honolulu Star Advertiser and Hawaiian Telecom. Welcome to Running It Back. I'm here with Chad Owens, Ryan Kilmaka, and today we are talking to former NFL player. Now he's a talented TV personality in the entertainment industry, Andrew Hawkins. Welcome. <laughs> What's up, y'all? Appreciate you having me. Man, look, this is uh, my guy. This is definitely a blessing, bro, to have you on here. Um, so appreciate you taking the time out of your extremely busy schedule, brother. Yeah, no, my pleasure, man. Seriously, I appreciate you having me on, man. Yeah. Uh, so, so where you at right now? L.A. L.A. Yeah, I'm in L.A. I'm, I'm based in Los Angeles. I've been here for like three years now. You know what I'm saying? As much as I'm doing and trying to do in the entertainment industry it just made the most sense to be out here nice of course. love how's the fam doing i love bro? your studio thank you thank you thank you very proud of my studio bro uh, talk about that studio yes. bro talk about the studio. more than an more than an athlete is that more than an athlete okay. yep that's that's the moniker so yeah when the quarantine hit you know i'm doing a lot in the entertainment world and obviously broadcasting and as a talent and media and like when when the when the quarantine hit and covid hit it was like everybody had this content that just looked like zoom calls and i was like well wh well how can i do something that makes me stand out and that i can show i can still do top level kind of content so i started i got on amazon and just started ordering stuff and building stuff and cameras and lights and microphones <laughs> and now here i am almost a year later and i still haven't left the garage yet but uh yeah it definitely served its purpose though you know yeah. man look i'm gonna tell you guys right now you have a studio too. At Hawk on Instagram. Oh. Okay. At Hawk. Bro, he has a post that showcases and highlights his garage home studio. And it is amazing. I got tons of inspiration from that, brother. Because I'm building trendsetter. Bro, this dude has <laughs> been a trendsetter. We're going to talk mm -hmm. about that. I got inspired to build my set, you know, in my garage. But, man, Hawk, Hawk, me and Hawk go back. And we, yeah, how do you, you know, two know each other? How do we know each other? Well, man, once upon a time. Now, it feels like it feels just like yesterday, huh, Hawk? Right. It's crazy, <laughs> man. <laughs> we were both in Montreal mm -hmm. in the Canadian football Ooh, league. Ooh, so the French. Ooh, je m'appelle Ryan or something. <laughs> <laughs> Montreal, yeah? Man, we were on the field. Ryan's in the streets. Anyway, <laughs> um, you know, we were both, believe it or not, on the practice roster. Mm -hmm. And and I, I want to talk about this. I'm sorry. This this is a crazy story. But Hawk had just came out of fourth and long, fourth and show, long, yeah. fourth yeah. and long show. And Hawk, tell I want you to tell the people, man, the people watching. I want you to go back to fourth and long. Explain what that is and and, and what transpired from that. Yeah. So fourth and long was a reality show competition where they took six defensive backs and six receivers off the street that so we weren't playing anywhere and they let them compete for a chance to sign with the Dallas Cowboys. So I, I played my college career. It was over. It was done. Toledo. Was like working a regular job at that point. I was working in a factory, working as a caddy. I was actually coaching receivers at Toledo when this show came about. So I like auditioned and as fate would have it, I got on. And so I did this show and I did really well in the show. I should have won from my humble opinion, but <laughs> yeah. I didn't. Yeah. You know? They, they gave me the runner-up because they were a little iffy about sending a 5'7 receiver to the Cowboys who came from a reality show. And so from there, I was able to get a, a CFL contract. That's how I ended up in Montreal. So I came late to camp that year. Um, not to – I made it, I made it came right before you did, Chad. But it was like I was coming right off of this show where I got to, like, showcase my talents on this show that wasn't the NFL. Mm-hmm. But it definitely put on display, like, oh, this kid has some juice. So that's how I even got the CFL contract because I had tried, for the, tried out for the CFL twice before and didn't get signed. Wow. So, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and Jim Pop, okay, Jim Pop, the general manager of Montreal Alouettes at the time, he's known <laughs> for bringing on sort of like, I don't want to say public figures people to, to sell tickets to kind of right, bring, bring those people, people on. In. And then Hawk, Hawk's there, like, hey, 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 that's a dude from the show. Yeah, man, that dude's baller. He's out there. Can he should have won? That all this, all this chit chatter going on, and and their hawk is yeah five seven. We we, we looking eye to eye. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, Ooh. I don't know hawk. I, I I might I might have you by half an inch. Might have you by half. <laughs> I'm like, 
I'm five seven and one eighth. You probably five seven and, and seven eighths. <laughs> Look, but 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 I'm looking at this dude, and then the first day out, man, I, I'm recovering from an ACL, so I'm just getting my feet wet. But I, I'm seeing this guy out there. I'm like, bro, I watched him on the show, and mm -hmm. then seeing him in person it was just like, yo, he said it right. He should have won, and he definitely got the juice. Uh, but look, Hawk, we're going to take a quick break here, but I, I want to, I want to continue the story because Keanu, this, this is know. amazing. You, you don't even know, but he, yeah, amazing story. So we're going to take a break. <laughs> we're going to be right back with Hawk. Running It Back is brought to you by the Honolulu Star Advertiser, bringing you what matters. Viewers can receive full digital access for $9.95 with code A High Thing. Hawaiian Telecom. Fiber power your TV and internet by calling 808-643-0900 or check availability at hawaiiantel.com. All right, we're back here with Hawk. We were just talking about how he and Chad know each other. So let's yeah, get more man. into that. So that camp, Hawk, I mean, you know, 2009, you know, Sheesh, that was, that, that was a that. special year for me. Man, I'm just on the, the best team in the league, you know, <laughs> win a great cup that year. I mean, talk about your experience and take us from that point, Hawk. Yeah, no, it's, it's wild from a lot of a lot of uh, viewpoints, Chad, because, I mean, you talk about that team. Me and you were guys on the practice squad along with S.J. Green, who is another future CFL Hall of Famer. You know, we had Brandon Whitaker practice squad. You know, we were just like a – our team was so good that it was tough for us to get on. Not to say we didn't have the ability to be playing as much as anybody else. It was just a log jam. So that being my first year of professional football, my first time ever getting paid to play football, was a dope experience. And learning and being around y'all, I can't, I don't, I mean, I'm not just saying this because I'm on the show. Being able to compete, watch you, watch the other guys that we had in there, that's what set me up to be able to go to the NFL. Honestly, when I was in college, I had a picture of Chad in my locker. I swear to God on everything what? I love. I had a picture of Chad in the all-black Hawaii uniform. Yo. rocking the swaggy. Because I wore number two, too. And, and Chad, and I'm, I watched Chad get drafted to the NFL. That's such a big thing because at the time, there wasn't five, seven receivers getting drafted. Yeah. You know, that, that shows wow, a guy yeah. like me what's possible. So to play with Chad, and when he came there, the same way, I'm kind of starstruck like, oh, snap, that's... That's Chad Owens. Like, he's he <laughs> busy. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, everything just came full circle. Wow, that's yeah. Awesome. Such a yeah, cool man. Circle. That's a cool story. And, and man. yeah, we that end up cool winning story. a great cup that year. Together. Uh, together. Hawk mm -hmm. goes on to just dominate. Mm -hmm. You know, how many years you get in the league in the CFL, Hawk? Was it three? I, yes. I, I played two in the, in the CFL. Two. Two and then I went to the league and, 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 and played seven in the league. Yeah. I mean, just, like, just wow. think about that for a second, right? Tried out for the CFL, didn't make it. Yeah. Coaching, you know, and then here comes a reality TV show. And then got into on. the CFL Should have won it, the show. but because of the undersized, you know, politics with right, that. Right, right, right. Doesn't win, but then gets the opportunity. But, but through hard work, through perseverance, mm -hmm. and catapults you, bro, to, to an unbelievable NFL career where you became a team captain. Like, you were the dude, bro. You were that dude. And since he next to uh, AJ Green, like you were that dude in the slot, bro, doing crazy yeah. stuff. Talk I about that experience, it. man. Talk about the NFL, man. Like, talk about that yeah, experience. Yeah, it was wild, man. It, it was wild. And, and I always say this like, when, when I got to the NFL, I was surprised that, again, my receiving core in, in Montreal was better than the one that, we, you know, when I first got that signed with the Rams. I was like in awe of that because oh, yeah. I didn't know. But it, it goes to show you, like, a lot of it is luck. Mm -hmm. And, like, luck of the draw, and you get into the right situation or getting the right opportunity. So when I got there, man, I was pinching myself, to be real, my whole time there. I'm like, I can't believe I actually was able to get here. I didn't think it was possible. You know, I mean, my, my goal was to play one game in the NFL just so I could be like, I did it. I did it. Mm -hmm. The haters were wrong. I accomplished it. So everything after that, man, was just uh, icing on the cake, icing on the yeah, cake man, gotcha. for real. Yeah. And, and bro – your last at the end, you have a chance to play with Tom Brady. Yeah. Right? You basically signed with the Patriots. Bro, yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah. Most yes, people are like, yes. But Hawk, you made a decision, man. Talk to us about that. 
Yeah, so I retired before the, that final season. I mean, my knee was hurting a little bit, but more than anything, man, it was just my time. Like I said, I, I, I'm a guy, little engine that could want to just, just play my one game in the league. And when I got it, I was like, oh, mission, mission accomplished. And actually, I tried to retire after my first year in the NFL because I was like, I did it. Yeah. And my brother actually convinced me, like, yo, you could get a pension. You might be able to get a second contract. It was It didn't even cross my mind. Seven years later, I was good enough to do any of those things. So by the time I got to New England, you know, I had started really focusing on like, okay, the first time when I finished college, I wasn't prepared for what life had, right? And I mm -hmm. felt like, I felt like you know, football got the best of me. So the second time around, I was like, yo, I'm not letting that happen again. So I would be interning in the off season, meeting with people. I would be taking classes. I went back and got my degree. So I was trying to build up as much as I could with all my extra time outside of football so that when I got done, I could transition as smooth as possible. So by the time I got to New England, I started to feel like the opportunity was no longer playing mm -hmm. football. As great as football was, my heart wasn't as in it as it used to be. And I, and I remember actually when I went and worked out for New England before I signed that contract, it was right after I graduated from Columbia to got my master's degree. 4.0. I, 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 <laughs> I, I took a a plane up there from broadcast boot camp because I was like wow, starting wow. my broadcast career. And I worked out with a kid who was in my same situation, trying to make it bounced around team to team CFL. And I felt guilty signing that contract, knowing like that was me one time and somebody was eating up the roster spot. That oh. I should have Hey, look, so we gotta talk about we, we're going to take a quick <laughs> break, bro. Like, that's that. Yep. That's that humbleness <laughs> I'm talking about. Yeah. We'll be right back with Hawk after this break. Safe and effective COVID-19 vaccines are important tools to protect our families and community. If you have any questions about the vaccines, visit hawaiicovid19.com slash vaccine. Oahu Lawn Service, your go-to for lawn maintenance, landscaping, and sprinkler installation and repair. Visit lawnservicenow.net. Okay, we're back with Hawk. Just talking about how he was about to retire. No, he did. Yeah, because and because of yeah, he wanted to give someone else an opportunity. Like who he knew does how that in the NFL? Though, man, yes. it's all egos. And Tom like, Brady. It's about me, <laughs> Hawk. It's like, a business. That's why, what, bro. What's, like, yeah. I mean, I just again, like it was. I mean, my my only goal in life was to play in the NFL since mm -hmm. I was seven years old. And so when I got to that point. It was like, you know, I knew my heart wasn't in it. First off, it's dangerous to be playing pro football and you're not – if you ain't got that dog no more, if you start questioning yourself whether you oh. want to get hit in search by Ray Lewis or Troy Palomalu, oh, yeah. then oh. it, it's time for you to go because you, you're actually putting yourself in harm's way. But, yeah, I watched this kid work out, man, and he was so hungry and we got connected and we were talking. And, yeah, I felt guilty about, like, here I am eating up a roster spot for the Patriots knowing there's there's guys like me out there – who needed that opportunity should be out here, want to be out here, need to be out here, and I was like, oh, it's just, it's, it's just my time. I was ready for the new challenges of, of life after football, and I made the decision to, to hang them up, man. Man, that's Crazy. that's bold. That takes a humble, yeah. a humble and a good-hearted person, man. But you so. set yourself up for it too, like you said. You interned during the off season. You got a 4.0 at Columbia <laughs> University. That'll get you. That'll get you uh, any job. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. My number one goal is not to move in with my mom, so I mission accomplished. <laughs> that's good. That's good. <laughs> All right. Well, we want to take this opportunity to, to running it back moment. So one of mm. your running it back moment, go back in time where there's a fork in the road and you didn't choose and it made you the man you are mm, today. That aha moment. That aha yeah. moment mm. or something. Something Ooh, back. Does, does it doesn't have to be like a football thing. It could be like a life thing. You know what I mean? So anything. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's a good one. So one, one of them was when I was coaching – um, there's two of them, but I, I'll talk about because they're just they're very similar. When I was coaching, I got a, an opportunity to intern with the Detroit Lions. This is after my college career, but before my professional career kicked off because it was like a year and a half, two years where I was just again just working jobs. So I got the opportunity to intern for the Lions as a scout, and I always wanted to be a general manager. And so I've been you know emailing, sending my resume out, and I got this opportunity. And I was a, I was a scouting intern with the Lions um, when Chad. Um, Calvin Johnson was there nice. and, and Lord Williams was a, a player there. And so I'm scouting there and I'm doing a really good job because talent evaluation is my thing. It's something I'm gifted at. And they offered me a full-time job basically. And they said, 
you know, but the stipulation is, I mean, you got to be done with football. And I don't know if they like, I never told them I wasn't done with football, but I was still like lifting every morning and I was still in pretty good shape. And I think they could just tell as I'm looking at the guys, yeah, I'm scouting them, but I'm also like better than them. I can, put, I'm put me in, put me in. <laughs> you know, so they, they offered me a full time role and they were like, you got to be, it got to be out of your system. And that was a very tough decision. My family, you know, thought I was crazy. My friends were like, yo, this is, you could be a front office with the Lions. Are you, are you kidding me? And I turned it down because I was like, I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I got, I still think I can play. And that was the fork in the road moment for me. And it was a, a great lesson for me just to, you know, you got to go with your heart and go with your gut. And mm. here Response. I am today. Good stuff. Bro, oh, good wow. stuff. Kudos, kudos to that, man. And, and, and for everyone that's watching, like, everyone that's watching for like, bro, exactly what, you, what the normal reaction would be like, bro, you, you're, you're crazy. I'd have took that job. Yeah. I'd have signed with Tom Brady. I would have played with Tom Brady. But it just goes to show your character, man, and, mm -hmm. and, and everything that you believe in. At the end of the day, you believed in yourself. You believed in your abilities. You believed in what you wanted. Mm -hmm. And you made the decision based off of that, not what others were thinking, anyone else. You went with the, with, with the gut. You went with the heart. And you worked for it. And I know we're coming up on the end of this segment. But leading into the final segment, bro, that sign behind you, more than an athlete, that's not just a statement, right? That's a, that's a brand, a something that you're a part of. And, you know, we can start to get into it now. You know, you prepared yourself. You were ready yeah. to walk away. And, bro, when you walked away, bro, you, you, you got right into it. Mm -hmm. And that work ethic, you transitioned right into that. So what is more than an athlete? What does that mean to you first and foremost, Hawk? And then we can yeah, dive into it, it a little deeper later. Absolutely, man. It's a, it's a mindset to me, right? It was, you know, again, if everybody else would have told it, I would have never been able to play in the NFL. You would have never been able to, to get drafted and be one of the best CFL players of all times. You know what I mean? So it's like it's thinking beyond the limitations other people put on you. It's like I can be a great athlete. I could also be a great producer. I could also be a great actor. I could be a great businessman. Mm -hmm. And it's, it just represents busting out of any limits or ceiling that people put on you in any facet yeah. like athlete is what i am but for everybody i feel like it's something they can identify with because you're more than what other people say you are and you're the person in control of that yes. look yes. man look okay. more about yeah. being more than an athlete and more than what others perceive you as here right after, after this, break. this. Running It Back is brought to you by Aloha Termite and Pest Control, your local and leading pest and termite control solution in the state, always providing you superior service with Aloha. <laughs> All right, so we are back and we were just talking about what more than an athlete means to Hawk. And so going off of that, I feel like you are more than just an athlete because you're doing so many things now. Yeah, yeah. take us to what you're doing yeah, what are you now, doing now? Hawk, you know so it's hawk so is no longer the football player hawk is the entrepreneur businessman right. all of tv the above. personality yeah there, there, this is always a tough question for me to answer because i i, I am of the mindset if i want to do it i'm going to start i'm going to do it like you know so i'm producing um developing projects um that that will have some announcements here soon obviously i'm i'm, I'm a television personality myself a uh, new show i just did uh debut today um, or a new show I just did debuted recently with the Roku channel. Um, yes. Having shows on Discovery, um, nice. Amazon, oh, NFL nice. Network. You know, um, keep producing them. as well as have my own company, uh, virtual reality and augmented reality company that will be making some pretty big announcements here soon. But yeah, man, I'm trying to stay busy and and, and trying to stay chasing it. Yeah, man, let's let's let's, let's work together, my guy. I feel like we got we got we got some. We got, we got some, some synergy. We yeah. got some synergy going. We got some stuff going. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, yeah, you. That's what's up, bro. I mean, congrats on all that. But the the show that just debuted, what is what is it called again? Uh, Roku recommends Roku. On, on the Roku oh. channel. So 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 basically, we make Roku's the like the new thing too now. Your streaming services, yes. all the mm. movies and TV shows you're watching, like me and my co-host Maria Menounos uh, from E and Entertainment Television. We we have a yeah kind of a daytime show that kind of walks through all of that, man just a hidden talent <laughs> something that he knew he is that is that something that you always had like as a kid were yeah. you just a goofball like you know honestly it was I, I was always a goofball i was always like <laughs> you know i had that duality to me but it, the, the version that you've seen i took football so serious yeah. because the opportunities they were slim so i was so worried and it, 
anxiety ridden about letting an opportunity pass me by. So everybody who played with me says that same thing because I was like so focused on making football pop. And I knew if I did that, everything else would come afterwards. And when I got done before I got into television, that was the decision I made like as I'm going into it is that I honestly didn't have as much fun as I should have playing football because I took it so serious. So that's why you've seen the more fun clown version of Hawk that uh, you know people may not have been used to that uh, strapped it up with me on the playing field. And, and bro, like, I, I love it. I think that's the beauty of it, though. It is, because I'm going to be honest with you. He's this hilarious. Guy, I, I, haven't, He's hilarious. I haven't seen him, like, you know, I see Hawk. And, like, and when I say focus, like, I don't see that smile a lot. Like, it, he smiles every now and again or whatever. But he was just, like, the dude was on a mission. Mm -hmm. So this this yeah. this Hawk I see now post-football, bro, I, 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 I only see you smiling. And laughing right. and making you know, jokes. I was scared I was going to get cut every day. <laughs> so every practice was like a game to me. So that focus was like, that was fear. Like, yo, if I don't go out here and eat every day, I'm going to have to go home. So it was like, yeah, that, that daily kind of burden was there, man. So I know exactly what you mean. That's such a great mindset, I'm telling you, though. you guys got to go. Not anyone can do that. No, you got to go to his page, man, at Hawk. And you got to find his you know, bit on, on Dennis Rodman. He's reenacting Dennis Rodman in the Jordan, in, in the, yeah. Jordan the, the, the last dance, bro. <laughs> I am telling hilarious. you, this is going to be one of the funniest things you will ever watch. <laughs> if you watch the last dance and you, you know the Dennis Rodman scenes, you're going to love this. Uh, but look, Hawk, I love uh, we're going to wrap this up, brother. I appreciate you so much. But stick Thanks. around, bro, because we're going into the extended version mm -hmm. on go. YouTube. And all of you watching, you do not want to miss out on this extended version. We are here no. with Andrew Hawkins, a.k.a. Oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to our extended version on YouTube. We're here with Andrew Hawk Hawkins. So excited. We're just getting this conversation going. Ryan had yeah. a question. What, what, was you, what was you about to dive into, bro? I was gonna, actually, guys, I was going to ask you um, where have you traveled and what's the best cities and, mm. and, and, and culture that you experienced because you seem like a very well-rounded individual, you know? I'm not, Ryan. I actually, I am not well-traveled at all. I, I hardly, if it's not for business, I typically don't go. I've only been out of the country like twice. Wow. Canada? Yeah. So, uh, Canada, uh, Canada, Mexico, St. Lucia, and Jamaica are the only places oh, that I've, nice. I've been. So those are those are great places, but mm -hmm. that is actually a part of my mandate when, like, COVID is, like, down, down. I am going to see the entire world. And I'm coming yeah. to Hawaii, too, so you can Oh, yeah. yeah. Perfect. Oh, yeah. We, we linking up. Definitely. 100%. 100%. <laughs> well, Ryan. Yo. Is it that time? Because, look, hold on, hold on. Before we get into this, all right, I got – I was known – for my quickness you know and I, I i'd like to believe that i was the quickest dude in the world i'm just going to throw that out there but <laughs> yeah you you're but shifty very hawk, shifty yo when i say i met my match hawk you got to take <laughs> take my quickness but but running 429 43 <laughs> I was a 46 guy. I'm just going to go ahead and be honest. I was 46. <laughs> Hawk was 43 with the quickness. Ooh, so wow. so 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 he's quick. And so, so he's got this, Ryan's got this rapid response question. So, you know, whatever just comes a to bit, mind. Just a few questions I got just here. Just a couple just, questions just for you. Just to get to know you a little bit better. So, All right, so the drum roll. Here we go. <laughs> Ryan Kilmaka's rapid response question. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. First one. Favorite color? Black. Nice. Ooh. Biggie or Tupac? Mm, that's a hard one, man. All right. Tupac. Nice. Football or acting? Oh, acting at the nice, moment. Nice, nice, nice. Tim Hortons or Starbucks? <laughs> Tim Hortons. Ooh. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, Hawk, Hawk <laughs> represents Canada now. Yo, yeah, he, we he, he, he flaunts that, that CFL, <laughs> that, that Montreal Grey Cup ring. I see him repping it always. Proud. So, proud, proud. Bro. Appreciate that. I Appreciate see it. As a matter right. of fact, I got. Do you I have it? Do you have it? Bill, my McGill health card from when I played in Canada. <laughs> I still what? got Montreal. It, it stays on my desk at all times. I still got Man, this. Wow. I still got this good, ring good. in my back pocket, too. You know what I'm saying? Look at that bling. What's that, bro? 
What's oh, that sugar from? bowl. Sure. Oh, yeah, sugar bowl. Back to championship. Twelve and old, baby. Okay. All right. Yeah, Ryan. <laughs> uh, Ryan was part of that that Hawaii twelve and old season sugar the back bowl market. year. You know, season the back. I remember market. like it was yesterday. You know, here we go. Here we go. Goonies or never ending story. Goonies. Oh, nice, nice. Here we go. <laughs> back to the future or Rocky. Rocky. Okay. Rom com or action? Like rom com or action, action. movies? Okay. Action. Okay. Chick Fil A or In and Out Burger? In and Out. Yes. Yeah, everyone's picking In and Out. Okay. Bitcoin or gold? Oh, that's gold. I'm not. Yeah, I'm going gold. Oh, gee, gold. Because it's it's actually a physical asset, huh? Touch it. It's mm, been here for I, thousands of years. Mm, it's still valuable. Mm, it, it, and it ain't going yes. nowhere. I feel you on that. It ain't yes. going nowhere. I feel exactly. you on that. All right, that's good. That's good with my, my rapid response question. Wait, I, have a, I have a question. I have a question. So your journey, it's being developed into a film? Yes. So are yes. you a documentary? Or no, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a scripted film. Oh. Um, yeah, because I had a crazy story of how I got to the league, man. Right. It is like, Definitely. You know. So are you part of that? Are you producing it? Are you directing it? I'm, I'm technically a part of it as a producer, but I've kind of been disconnected. It's a very weird thing to be like, putting the story together of your own story yeah. because you have yeah. a very specific lens of what it should look like, feel mm -hmm. like. And so I got to separate myself a little bit, but I am technically an executive producer of it. Wow. Um, cool. But yeah, it'll be cool. It, I, I'm ho hopefully that it, 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 it captures the essence of the story and just taking the time with it because so, that's something, I mean, your kids got to watch that, right? That's your legacy and you, yeah. you, want it to, you want it to be as on, on pace with the actual story as possible. Man, if you need any cam cameo, you have to choose someone to be you. you. No, we can be in a cameo, right? Ah, I mean, I mean, I mean, he was part of that hey, life, the CFL hey, life. Hey, bro. we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to but, be a part of it. But you're not going to actually be in the movie, so you have to choose someone to be you, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Five seven, five seven. Yeah, you, you have to quit this <laughs> something, but you know. Man, I'm not, playing, has, like, I'm not playing. I'm not playing. Why not? You, 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 you can be an actor. You can be whatever. Becoming an actor. I'm becoming an actor. Yeah, you become anything. But that's super cool. That's super cool. Yeah, man. Congrats on that. Yeah, that's big, bro. You know, you don't you want to talk about legacy. Like that's yeah. That's that's a legacy, brother. So congrats yeah. on, on that. You know, talking about that, your journey and that, that's being produced into a film. I want you to share with us one particular story. This is this is desperation at its finest. Mm -hmm. And this is this is where the 4.0 kid comes in. He just outsmarts people. So Hawk. <laughs> Take us back to that time when you created fake emails, yeah, pretending to be an agent <laughs> and, and to get a hold of like. I mean, take us through that because that's that's witty. Wait for what? Yeah, for yeah. himself? For, for himself? Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You explain, yeah. you explain, yeah. it. Yeah, so okay, I played, I played college. I played four years. It wasn't like I had, I had, you know. I mean, honestly, CO pro, Chad probably half had all of my career yards within half of a season. To be real. <laughs> Like, I, you know, it wasn't like they were, like, feeding me, right? And I'm like, my thing would always be, I'm at practice. I can see these guys. I'm better than these guys. I'm not getting the ball. The coaches aren't like, yo, let's feature the 5'7 receiver. They're always going. So I didn't have a great college career, you know? Mm -hmm. And so that means when you get done, like, agents recruit you to represent the players that they think they'll get a return on their investment as playing professional. Mm -hmm. So I had no agents, like, literally zero agents trying to represent me because there wasn't any prospectus of me being a professional football player, right? But I knew I was good, and I was like, that's step one. I got to get somebody to be talking on my behalf, or even if someone by some miracle happens and say, hey, we want to give you a shot, it makes me look like I'm not really any good if an agent won't even represent me. Because yeah. honestly, I mean, it's I don't want to say it's easy to get an agent, but it's pretty easy to get an agent. Oh, like. Yeah. 80% of the people with agents don't even make it to play professional football. Mm -hmm. That's how many agents are out there trying to find diamonds in the rough. So to make a long story short, what I did was I, I created a fake email address and I acted like I was a graduate assistant coach. And I sent this email raving about this slot receiver who <laughs> was this fast, this quick. He could play in the NFL, definite in the CFL or whatever it is. You no, know, he just, you need to get on this train and don't miss this boat because it, it'll be too late. So I blasted that out to like 
probably 75 different agents, wow. right? I probably had maybe four respond favorably, and then only one was like basically like, yo, we want to sign them. And there was another upstart agent out of Florida. That ended up being the agent I signed with and ended up being my agent. He's one of my good friends to this day, 13, 14 years later. <laughs> Did you have um, telling him the story? Does he know? Yeah, I told him the story. <laughs> his, his quote was, if the only time I get duped in my life ends up netting me a half a million dollars in agent fees, then I'm doing okay for myself. So wow. it was, it was, a. am not proud of it, but it, I, I just, I was desperation to Chad's yeah. point. I needed somebody fighting on my behalf because I knew I could perform if I just got the opportunity and, you know, all's well that ends well. And that's on using your resources. That's using yeah. your brain. Using your brain. Exactly. So, I mean, everyone that's that's watching and listening, right? Take that in. Take take what he he did. Yeah. Right? He didn't just give up. He didn't just quit. He There was no stone left unturned. Yeah. Right? Yeah. He went out and did that to and get himself. And he wasn't up. lying. So, imagine if Hawk doesn't do that. Yeah. Right? He doesn't get an agent. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Maybe doesn't get on the, on, on, on the show. I mean, doesn't get... And maybe is, isn't promoting and doing all these things more right. than athletes like and this is why i love this stuff hawk i love these stories because everyone you don't have to be an athlete everyone yeah. has a story everyone comes to the forks in the road everyone has opportunities to to to, to go out and be the best version of themselves <laughs> mm-hmm. and do what they want to do and accomplish what they want to accomplish and yeah. so hawk just it, it, it's just he, he was able to do it at the highest level and and outsmart the supposed you know cream of the crop yeah. You know, with the brains. It's, a, it's important to say, man, and I know I said it already. I'm going to say it again, how important the Chad Owens in my life are, like, and what they represent. Because, again, you grow up, I grow up my whole life, people telling me what I can't do, right? Mm-hmm. And I have a decision to make. I can believe them and figure out something else, or I can say they don't know what they're talking about. That was the decision I made early on. And so from then on, I, I was immune to people telling me what wasn't possible or how things are done. So in those situations, I never give up on anything until I've tried every way to slice it. I don't care if yeah. it's been done before. I can figure out a creative way to make it happen. And then once I do that, if, if that still doesn't work, then I'll move on. But rarely, once I make the decision to do something, is it I won't find a way to get it done. And the only things that keep me going is not the fact that I can do that, but along the way, seeing the chad owens of the world i can't stress that enough because it tells me all i need is to see one person do it and if one person do it i know i can i can figure out a way to do it a a different way if they did it and so them telling me you can't be five seven and play pro ball i'm like no I, i automatically know you're wrong because here's chad owens you know the best receiver in hawaii history i used to watch him get busy every way shape or form six round pick to the jaguars you know, CFL Hall of Famer, like that's a big deal to people and what you represent. So I, I can't understate that enough, man. I, I mean that that is that is true um, in every sense of the word, man. And even being in Montreal, you being like, yo, you could play in the league. Like people hadn't been telling me that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like yeah. I didn't have a bunch of people telling me you could play even at that point. Like so for you who have been there, seen it and said no. You could play in the league. That meant everything to me. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And, and 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 feeling that those little moments, I'm I'm not so confident that I'm like, oh, I got it. As long as I believe in me, no, those moments help keep me going when it got really really hard, especially in Montreal. Yeah, nice. bro. Well, I appreciate Aww. that, man. That, that's kind of you, man. And 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 we all we all good need stuff, we have self belief but we need we need people in our corner yeah. at the end of the day you Some need people in your corner you yeah. need pillars you need people to to show you that it's possible you mm. need to see that it's possible mm-hmm. right and and not just in sports but in business life whatever it yeah. is and yeah we we all i think a lot of people believe that they can do things but but there comes moments throughout life where you you do have it's the self nice. doubt, it's nice. and but then yeah, it's nice you, to it's have, nice other to people have believe someone in you. believe in you and to tell you yeah. mm-hmm. that you can do it. That gets you over the hump, mm-hmm. right? That gets you motivated. That gets you working harder. And so you know, hey, what I I guess what I meant for you, Hawk, you you mean to so many more, and that trickle down effect I think is is huge 
in, in sports, in life, and in, and in everything we do, man. So I appreciate you so much, man. And, and bro, I think with that, I think we're going to wrap on that, man. I mean, <laughs> we can go on and on and on because you've yeah. got an amazing story. you got so much more to do, and your, your story is going to continue to be written, man, and you're going to continue to inspire uh, as, as, as your life unfolds. So, uh, Looking forward to that oh film. Oh, my God. I'm looking forward to yeah, that I'm film. looking forward to everything. You're going to have a watch man. party. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Go. And maybe we'll have, we got to have you on again, bro, in season three, season four down the road when, when you're like, you know, winning more awards because you are definitely an award winning uh, digital media person for the NFL. So congrats on that, man. And yeah. hey, continue to enjoy the fam. Love on the fam, bro. And I appreciate you so much, man. I can't wait to catch up with you uh, out there in L.A. Likewise. Appreciate you guys having me. Thanks. Man. All right. And that's it, man. Thank you guys uh, all so much for tuning in. This is the Running Back Podcast. I'm Chad Owens. Bro, bro. Brian Kim, Maka, bro, bro. <laughs> and I'm Kiana. The lovely Kiana Kiabia. Aloha. Running It Back was presented to you by the Honolulu Star Advertiser and Hawaiian Telecom.